Hey guys and welcome back to another Mission 4 tutorial. In today's video it's going to be similar to my last video except this time we're going to be spamming E to interact with something. So this could be to pick it up, to destroy it, to break it like if you're mining, killing a tree, anything like that or even if you've been caught by an enemy so your enemy catches you you have to spam E to escape again. So I'm going to be showing you a basic concept of this. In this example it's just going to destroy this object i.e. simulating me picking it up. But again you can use this in absolutely whatever you like it's very easy to adapt and I'll show you how. So let me show you what it's going to look like now. So we're going to get in, I'm going to go over to it, I'm going to spam E, you see we have the widget saying spam E to pick up, I spam it, the progress bar goes up, if I stop it's going to go down and it won't pick up and it won't save the progress, and if we just spam E all the way up, it's going to pick it up like so. So this is what we're going to be making today, so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So the first step we're going to take is we're going to create the widget which we're going to put on screen showing us how far we have progressed through spamming E. Now the reason we're doing this first is because we can then just set up the variables in there which we need to use later on. And it's a very quick step as well, so let's do that now. So to do that we're going to right click on our content browser down here, go to user interface, and we're going to create a widget blueprint. This one I'm just going to name spam e widget, but you can name this absolutely whatever you like. That just makes the most sense for me as that is the sole purpose of this widget for me. And open that up straight away. In here what we're going to do is we're going to create a progress bar and some text. So this is what we're going to see on screen. So I'll do the progress bar first. I'll put it here, I'll say that it's going to be about two blocks wide, so I'll just scale it up like so, and I'll also anchor it down there as well, so change the anchor, put it there, and the anchor just means it stays in this location on the screen. After this, I'm going to add some text just above it, so drag and drop some text in there. I'm just going to rename this, so in the text under content there, I'm just going to put spam E to pick up. Again, you can put this one if you like, so spam E to break free, or press E to break free, anything like that, you just put that in there tick size to content, I'll up the font size to about 30, put it in the middle and then again just anchor it there as well so it doesn't move away like so. And then I'll also change the colour to be black so it shows up a little bit better in our scene. And then there you have the widget set up visually. So this is what the player is going to see. Now we need to set up the code and this is very simple. So what we're going to do is going to select the progress bar here. Under progress we have percent, to the right of that we have bind. I'm going to hit bind and then create binding. And you can see here, the binding, what this does is it just fills up the percentage progress bar using this return value here, and it needs to be between the values of 0 and 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. So we're going to hit the plus variable in the top left up here, and we're going to name this one amount pressed or pressed amount, anything like that. This is just how many times the player has pressed the button. And we're going to make this one a float, so it's a numerical value with a decimal in, as that's what we need because it's between 0 and 1. We hit the plus variable again. This one is going to be called presses needed, so how many times the player needs to press the button. And that is also going to be a float. So we have the amount of times the player has pressed the button and how many times the player needs to press the button. Then all we're going to do is get amount pressed there, divide this, so we get a float divided by a float. And we're going to divide it by the presses needed, so the amount of presses the player needs to do. And that is going to go straight into the return value there, and it is that simple. So all we need to do to get the percentage between them is get the amount pressed divided by the amount needed, so the press needed. And that will do that perfectly for us. And we'll set up these variables later, but this is all we need to do in the widget. This is it done. So we can compile, save, and close that like so. Now let's set up the blueprint of which we want to spam E on. So again, in this example, I'm going to be doing it on just a simple cube to pick it up. But you can do this anywhere. It's the exact same code, and I'll show you just one thing which you need to change. And that's just the unique part for your code. So that will be different for pretty much everyone. So what I'm going to do is right click, get a blueprint class, and we're going to get an actor. And I'm going to name this one Spam E Pickup. As that makes sense for me, as that's what it is. Obviously, you can name it whatever you like. So just pick up BP or anything, again, compared to what you need. But for me and the purpose of this tutorial, that's why I'm naming it. And we're going to open that up straight away. In here, we're going to add a few components. The first one is just our item. So for me, that's just going to be a cube. So I'm going to add component to get a cube, and I'll have that there. That's just resembling the item I'm picking up. Then I'm going to add another component. This one is going to be a box collision, like so. And this is where the player needs to be in order to pick it up. So I'm going to scale it up like so, and the player needs to be in this area in order to pick up the cube or interact with it. So I'm going to compile and save that, and that is that part done. I'm going to go straight up to the event graph after that, like so. We can then delete these three events as we don't need them. What we can do instead is right click on our box collision in the top left components left up there, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click the box collision again, add event, add on component end overlap. And the other actor of these, we're going to cast to our character. 
For me, that's the third person character, but for you, it could be the third person, first person, whatever you've named it. And the reason we're doing this is so it is the character which triggers this overlap event. It isn't anything else in the world, it's just our character. And like I say, we're going to do that for the begin and end overlap events, like so. After this, we want to enable and disable the input so the player can only press E and or whatever button you have when they are close enough to it. So the player can only interact with this and spam the button when they're close enough. So we're going to come out of cast third person character off begin overlap and enable input. Then we're going to come up with the cast third person character on end overlap and disable input. The targets will leave as self. The player controller, we're going to get player controller like so. Plug it into the player controller for both of them and then that will work perfectly. So now we can only interact with this when we're close enough to it. Then off of enable input, what we're going to do is we're going to create widget, like so, with the class as our spam e widget we just made. So this could be whatever you named it, but it's the widget we just created. The return value of this, we're going to right click, promote to variable, and call this widget ref, as it's a reference to our widget. And then out of this, we're going to add to viewport. So this just means that when we are close enough to it, we're going to put that widget on screen so the player can see it. And after remove it, all we want to do is off of disable input, we're going to get a remove from parent. So come out the return value of the create widget, and we're going to remove from parent, connecting that to the disable input there. So this means that when the player is close enough, we're going to have a widget on screen, and when they're far enough away so they move away, it's going to be taken off their screen again. So that will work perfectly for us. One final thing we need to do here is we're going to come out the widget ref again and we're going to set presses needed. Plug that in there like so and we're going to set this to be a new value we're going to make in here. So we can hit the plus variable again and we're going to name this one presses needed and we're going to make this a float like so. And we're just going to drag and drop this in, get and set press needed there. So we're going to be setting it for this current blueprint into this one in the widget and if we select presses needed again we're going to tick instance editable with this little eye down here and the reason we're doing this is this just means that we're going to make it different for each instance of this blueprint so if you have multiple items you can have it so you have to press e a different amount of times inside of each blueprint so that's why we're doing it this way and we can set the default value as well so we compile i'll set the default value to let's say 15 as that's what i had when i was testing it out as well so that was a good value which i found for showing it off so the player needs to press it 15 times by default unless of course you change it now let's set up actually pressing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come just above this code here and we're going to get an interact action mapping or just the E key or whatever you want. So to do that, we're going to go to edit, project settings. Once it loads, we're going to scroll down to input in the left down here. And you can see I already have it down here. These are just from previous tutorials, so don't worry if you don't have them. I'll delete it and remake it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus action mapping here. I'm going to name this to interact or whatever you want. And I'll change it from the key of non to the E key. But this can be E, F, left click, absolutely whatever you like, but E makes the most sense for me. And the benefit of action mappings means we can set up multiple keys, keys for different consoles, and also key bindings. So once you've done that, we're going to close it straight away, right click in our event graph, and we're going to search for interact. And you can see we have action events interact there, like so. Out of this, we want to create a new variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable again. This one I'm going to name pressed amount. So again, how many times the player has pressed it. I'm going to compile, leave the default value at zero, and you can have it as a float or an integer. It doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to leave it as a float so we don't have to truncate it later going back into the widget. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop and get pressed amount there, just above our interact. And then off of pressed, we're going to get an increment. And we're going to get an increment float, like so, plugging the pressed amount into the first value of that. And what an increment float does is it just adds this variable and it adds one to it. So we can just get a float plus a float and put one in, but this is going to do it automatically for us. So we'll add one. So what we're going to, to do is then set press amount off the return value for that. So whenever we press E, it's going to get our current pressed amount and add one to it. So that worked perfectly like so. But that's just going to keep going up. So we want to reset this if the player stops pressing E. So we're going to come off of released of the action mapping there, and we're going to get a re-triggerable delay. We're doing a re-triggerable delay so that when the player presses E again, this delay will start from zero. So essentially, whenever the player spams E, this isn't going to constantly set to zero. So let me do that as well, actually. So off of the completed, we're going to set pressed amount to zero. So the player presses E, it's going to go to one. When they let go, it'll go back to zero. So let's set the delay as well. So I'm going to set this to 0.3. You can put it as whatever you like. This is just basically, the shorter it is, the quicker the player needs to press E. 
And so again, because it's retriggerable, it means every time we release the E key, it's going to start again from zero, counting up to 0.3. So that's how we get the spamming effect. So off of the top set pressed amount, off of released, I'm going to come out of that, I'm going to get an equal equal boolean. So a float is equal to a float. Plugging that as the top value and putting the bottom value as our press is needed. So put press is needed into the bottom value there, like so. Off the return value of this equal equal, we're going to get a branch. So you can hold down B, left click to get a branch like so. Plugging that in there, like that. Off of true, this is where you have your interaction code. So again, for me, I'm just getting a destroy actor. But for you, this could be opening a door or destroying the actor, so picking it up, breaking free from a, an AI or anything like that. So breaking free from an AI, you'd probably want to disable the movement to start with when you get captured and then re-enable the character movement here, which you can do from either a cast or just do this in a player blueprint. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial on doing that, I can do that if you want, so more specifically to breaking free from an AI. Let me know in the comments down below. But again, this here is your interaction code. So for me, that's destroy actor. Off of false, what we want to do is get a reference to our widget reference here, but we can just use this. So we're going to come out of our widget reference, I'm going to set amount pressed like so, plugging that into the false there. So we also want to plug it in there as well. So what this means is that when the player stops pressing E, it's going to set the press amount to zero, or when they also finish pressing E, so they've got the maximum amount, it will just reset it to zero as well. Let me just move this code down a tiny bit, just give it some more space. And this is the code done. So let me give you a quick run through again. What's going to happen is when we're close enough to it, we can spam E and it's going to give us a widget. We get far enough away from it, we can no longer spam E and the widget gets taken off our screen. And when we are spamming E, what's going to happen is it's just going to simply add one to the amount we've pressed. And if we don't press it quick enough, it will get reset to zero. Once we reach the amount that we need to press, so for me that's 15, but again, you can change this to whatever you like and you can change it for each blueprint. Once we reach that, it's going to simply just do your interaction code. So again, for me, that's destroy actor, but for you, this could be anything you want. And then I've just noticed something we need to change as well, actually. And so again, if you don't do it quick enough, it's going to set it to zero. And again, false here will be zero. However, we want to change this. So the amount pressed, we want to connect to that amount pressed there. So what it's going to do is it's not going to reset it to zero. It's going to set it to the amount it should be. And so the reason we're connecting it there is because we don't want to reset it to zero off of false. We want to put it as the amount that we have. So we want to set it in the widget because we're setting the current one in this blueprint here to zero. Then we also want to put it in the widget so that that is the progress bar which is on our screen. We want to set it to the current amount we have, which will just be off of this here. That won't always return zero. This is just retrieving the value of pressed amount there. So like I say, this code should now work perfectly for us. So we can compile, save, minimize, place some of these in and test it out. So I'm gonna put one in there you can see we have press needed here, which is 15 by default. That's good. So that one we have to press 15 times. This one, I'm going to say we have to press five times. And then we should see that working as well. So let's hit play to test this. And let's test this one first. So you can see we have the widget there. I walk away, it goes. I go back up. I spam E, it goes up. I let go, it goes back down. So this one should be five. So one, two, three, four, five. So you see I'm doing it slowly as I'm counting. So I need to do it quicker, one, two, three, four, five, there you go. So as you see, I set the delay to 0.3, so I wasn't doing it quick enough there, which is how we want it to do. The player really needs to spam E for it to work. So again, if you don't want it to be that quick, you simply just increase this duration here. So you just make it higher for the player to have more time. So again, let's do that again, it should be five, one, two, three, four, five, that worked perfectly, the progress bar went up with it. This one should be 15. So we can see that we're spamming it. If I let go, we'll do it too slowly. It goes to the start. We walk away, go back, it's there. And we just go all the way up like this, spamming it 15 times, and it will work perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've made this system in which, in which we have to spam E to interact with something, which again, you can customize to be absolutely whatever you want. And if you need more help making it more specific to something else, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help you out. So again, we go up to it, we get the widget, we walk away, it goes off, and the widget increases with how many times we press E, or whatever you want, and after we finish, it then picks it up, or again, does the code that you want. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.